Have you heard of focus groups, but you're not really sure what they're for? Focus groups are used by many organizations to gain insight into their audience. The applications of focus groups are nearly endless, as long as you organize them correctly. In today's video, we're diving into everything about focus groups, what they are, how and when to run them, and what they're useful for. I'm Sissy from Jotform. Let's get right to it. Focus groups can be used for any and everything. Corporations use them to study and sell anything from toys to hit movies, and political parties use them to perfect their campaign messaging. Focus groups are even used by law firms to predict a jury's response to certain arguments. More likely than not, most of the products you've purchased have resulted from the opinions of a focus group in one way or another. But what are focus groups? Focus groups are a fundamental component of market research and can be described as small group discussions, often led by a trained leader. Many organizations use them to gather opinions on a specific topic to provide insight for their future decisions. Beyond corporations, focus groups can be used for grassroots causes, like discussing local childcare needs, and focus groups have the ability to yield valuable information within a short period of time to improve an entity's decision-making abilities. So, what is it that sets a focus group apart from other gatherings? Focus groups are structured and specifically directed to ensure everyone's opinions are heard. They differ from gatherings, like community meetings, as they often discuss a specific focus topic, are led by a trained facilitator who moves the discussion forward, and they are often composed of carefully selected participants who are encouraged to share their thoughts freely. With that in mind, why might you use a focus group? Focus groups are a way to get information from consumers without relying on surveys or interviews. Focus group participants have the ability to interact with each other and can influence each other's decisions throughout the discussion. And focus groups tend to be more advantageous than alternatives like quantitative surveys because focus groups are more flexible, allow decision makers to talk to customers directly, and focus groups provide unique insight into a customer's perception of a brand, product, or service. Learning what a person feels and thinks about your topic promotes more depth and variety than the typical assessment survey. The qualitative research conducted in a focus group can add valuable insight into existing data. For a successful focus group, you'll need to remember that the purpose is not for the group to arrive to a consensus. It's not the time to come up with a plan, but the time to focus on the perceptions of those in the group, who are ultimately representatives of your broader target audience. So pay attention to whatever it is that they have to say about your product or service. Now that you know why you should hold a focus group, let's talk about when you should hold one. Some occasions that you may want to hold a focus group are when you're considering introducing a new product, program, or service, when you want to ask questions that can't be easily answered on a written survey, when you want to supplement the information gained from a written survey, and when you have the time, resources, and knowledge available to hold a focus group. Once you've decided to hold a focus group, how should you go about running it? First, let's think about what makes a successful focus group. The quality of a focus group depends upon the conversation. So it's essential to provide an environment that encourages open discussion. This includes removing any distractions and creating a logical progression of questions that mimic a natural conversation. You'll also want to ensure that all participants contribute equally in order to reach a positive outcome. Skilled moderators who genuinely encourage participants are more likely to yield well-rounded results. Here are some things you should do before your focus group. Recheck your goals. What do you hope to learn? Why are you doing this? Find a good leader. The leader determines the success of your group. Find a leader that has experience facilitating focus groups, has knowledge around the topic, can relate to the participants, and understands your goals. Assign someone to capture the discussion, either by writing, typing, or recording. If you choose to record, get approval from the group ahead of time. Select your representative group. Use common sampling practices to determine how to go about the selection process. Consider providing incentives for participants. 
decide on the details, like when, where, and how long the discussion will be, and prepare your questions in advance. During a focus group, the leader typically takes charge and guides the events, beginning with thanking participants, stating the goals for the meeting, and setting the ground rules. Your opening question is your first impression and sets the tone for the meeting as a whole. It's up to you to decide if it should be broad or more specific. Some common methods used in focus groups are summarizing what you believe you heard from the group to confirm whether or not they agree, asking if anyone has a comment on a certain question, asking follow-up questions, looking around the room often, and making an effort to make eye contact with those who haven't spoken, once the focus group is over, review the discussion for any patterns, themes, and conclusions that emerge during the meeting. Offer feedback to the participants so that they feel like their contribution is valued. Then put your results into action. This may be sharing your findings, releasing a new product, or going back to the drawing board. Whatever it may be, you'll always have something to act on after a focus group. We've covered a lot of information today, so let's take a moment to review. Focus groups are structured, small group discussions, often led by a trained leader, and are essential in market research. They're a great way to get information from consumers without relying on surveys, which can be more limited. You might consider holding a focus group when you plan to introduce something new or when you want to supplement survey information. The quality of a focus group depends on the conversation, so provide an environment that encourages open discussion. When the focus group is over, Review any patterns, themes, or conclusions that emerged to inform your next steps. Again, I'm Sissy with Jotform, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.